The Man in Line. Daily interaction, debate and exchange of ideas. Broadcast on Manx Radio. Fast of my good afternoon. Welcome to Manx Radio's Man in Line. We're open line through till one today. Well, the big news that broke yesterday afternoon, ShopRite has sold its nine stores on the Isle of Man to Tesco, including larger stores, uh, little ShopRite stores, WineRite on Victoria Road. Now the stores will remain trading as ShopRite during the transition period and then will re- be rebranded to Tesco over the next nine months. Text, call, email, WhatsApp. Whatever it is you want to say, your initial reaction to this. Bear in mind, earlier on this year, we lost Ramsey Bakery to the name ShopRite, which there was life before ShopRite. It was in the early 1970s it arrived. But for the past 50 years, it's been an ever-present retailer on the Isle of Man. So Ramsey Bakery's name going, ShopRite's name going. Who knows how many other businesses that rely on the retail opportunities given to them by ShopRite um, will survive. We keep our fingers crossed anyway. But get in touch if there's something you'd like to uh, talk about. David's first with us now. Hi, David. Hi, Randy. Uh, yes, to me it was a shock, the the announcement, but you never know what's coming along down the road. But I want to just put on a couple of things to Shop Up right and the Nicholson Brothers. They're, uh, they're probably done a a business uh, solution and made it right for them they maybe want to retire and you can't decry them for that well I remember when the shop right when I was younger anyway I used to be down at um, Victoria Road there and I used to wander around and there were pallets of stuff big bulk stuff sugar I remember sugar was huge packets you could buy in, in bulk but what I wanted to say was I wonder how the government are going to step up now, defer itself to, because the writing's on the wall, isn't it? And you've got the products that we have, starting from the meat plant. I remember when I was in government, uh, uh, Tesco, uh, not Tesco, ShopRite always had their beef uh, queued longer in their refrigerators. And that's a definite as far as that, because I asked the question. And then we've got the milk, cheese, butter, Gelling's eggs, and all the local industries we've got on the island, when a bigger person comes in, I'm not decrying Tesco as such uh, for their business models, but what they normally do is, uh, what they say is, well, what can you sell it for? Well, I can get it to this, and I can ship it on the boat, uh, and you get it the next day or something like that. And I think Parliament has got to get together and do something. It's close to an anti competitive practice because there's a monopoly there and I, I do hope that government arms uh, check it all the time and because you've got 60 jobs potentially going and I do support Rob Collister's issue to the chief minister to say work permits do you really need to do this in this day and age when I, I think I listened to the, some of the reports from the Chamber of Commerce they mentioned work permits, but we're fill, fulfilling them. But they mentioned visas and other things which are potentially longer to do. But that's not the fault of the government. That's the fault of an organisation that's not getting their act together to get a person to come to the Isle Man if we need them. It'll be interesting to see, I mean, how this works because they, I mean, obviously the, um, is it Isle of Man Enterprises, the company behind it, yeah. will be getting yeah. uh, rental. They've leased the, the premises for 21 years, so they'll yeah. be getting significant income from, from Tesco. And again, I mean, mm-hmm. this is this is in a way, David, a backhanded compliment to the Isle of Man because the Tesco does so well <laughs> that they yeah, are yeah. expanding. I mean, they're blanketing the Isle of Man. Obviously, the brewery has spa and uh, yeah. Lang's co-op is still going to be around but it's going to be basically yeah. Tesco Island Well I remember when the, uh, uh, the first thing at the Lake Road was when the, the land was uh, coming available I remember uh, we were in the throes of having the co-op there a big multi-storey co-op one of these big ones they have but that never happened and, and Tesco got it but I do hope that people can uh, and it's going to be h- harder times and it's harder times for all of us and I do shop and plug out for our local co-op in Ogden here 
Uh, the only thing they had the other day, winch on them, is they didn't have any strawberries. But that was the fault of the boat. It wasn't the fault of the the, the co-op itself. But I, I just wonder if we're going to get all those ducks in a row. And the chief minister is quite right. Talk to them inside, and there's going to be loads of people on. And just respect, because I remember uh, my uh, first thing when I was a child. My mother used to say to me in Williston, he says, go up to the shops and don't forget your divvy. And I've still got a, I'm a co-op member, and I think I've got five quid in it. Uh, so, you know, I um, that's the only thing I'm, I'm going to declare. I've got shares in ShopRite. But I remember ShopRite coming here, developing Onken, getting involved with the community. And the other things we, we, might, we might, I hope we don't miss with Tesco too is, ShopRite, the co-op, and what it used to do little food parcels for coffee mornings and little things we have in the community. Yeah. I hope that ShopRite actually, uh, sorry, Tesco, actually has a retail thought about the island and its economy here. Okay, we'll see. All right, All right thanks, David. See you, boy. Cheers now, 13 minutes past 12. Your thoughts on the fact that Tesco will be blanketing the Isle of Man. Obviously, the brewery owns spa. There is the Manx Co-op, but, I mean, ShopRite um, uh, stores are far and wide. Uh, you know, a couple in Peel, a couple in um, uh, Ramsey, and obviously I wonder what will happen to the old ShopRite living because there was a thought that Tesco wanted to sell clothes and homewares, and uh, maybe that's part of it. Remember, Tesco is absolutely enormous. Revenue last year, £61.3 billion. Pounds. Operating income, £2.8 billion. It's massive. Uh, a question in from Carol, who just said, uh, when, since Tesco are going to be arriving, does that mean that they'll bring back the Tesco credit card they took away? If they're putting that much faith in the Isle of Man, will they bring back uh, the credit card? ShopRite support lots and lots of food producers and businesses on the Isle of Man, uh, from the uh, sandwich makers to, um, obviously, the artisan bread people. Noah Bakery go into all the ShopRites. Now, whether or not Tesco will see fit to do that and again uh, l- look uh, at this Tesco is a multinational company I mean it is enormous uh, the third largest retailer in the world and the ninth largest in the world by revenue gross revenue third largest revenues ninth largest shops in Ireland the UK Czech Republic Hungary Slovakia and now more in the Isle of Man Howard's uh, with us now hi Howard hello Andy uh, just on the Tesco shop right uh, situation um, Tesco well as you just mentioned that a huge conglomerate and I wonder um, always been a suspicious person. Have they, well, they're renting the properties. They bought the business. They'll just change that eventually. Nine months is not a, a long time. But um, have they bought the businesses, all the shops, nine shops, to prevent another supermarket moving into the island? Well, I'd be very surprised if they didn't, uh, Howard, I would imagine. Yeah. I mean, the people behind Tesco are very, very sharp. Yep. Uh, they're very, very quick on their feet. And I would imagine that the, all the rumours that we heard <laughs> about Aldi coming out over, um, of course, this will block anybody else coming in. Um, I don't know what this is. We're trying to get a word from the Office of Fair Trading if there's any monopolies um, yeah. inference well, in, in all this. But uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're, you're spot on with the fact that they would they would swamp the Isle of Man, which means nobody else would take a look at it. Obviously, yeah. I mean the one person, the one company we haven't mentioned is Marks and Spencer. There was a rumor one, once upon a time that there were vacant lots around the Isle of Man that Marks and Spencer were going to put their little M and S foods in, and I would guess uh-huh. that that would be off the table now. But M and S, of course, still. And remember, the Isle of Man is a very affluent place. It provides yes. very big revenues for Marks and Spencer, and certainly for Tesco. Well, I know the um, Tesco were notorious many years ago for buying plots of land, I've just said to Chris, buying plots of land in various towns and cities and leaving them vacant. But that prevented other supermarkets from building in the area and it kept the monopoly very firmly in Tesco's hands. 
Uh, they were chastised for it, and I think it's been stopped. They've had to sell a lot of these plots. But this is just another way, although they're, um, they're taking existing buildings, it is another way of preventing uh, people from moving in or discouraging them. I wouldn't say it won't prevent them. They were de- determined enough they would do. It would discourage them. And Aldi are at the moment expanding at a, a tremendous rate. They're talking about 300 extra shops, supermarkets, etc. throughout the UK. It's a last, uh, big, big area. But the Isle of Man could have been part and parcel of that. The same as Deals, they're, they're the, the Irish section of Poundland. Um, you know, it's just the same horse, just a different jockey. Well, the shop right signs will be up there, but um, it, all intents and purposes, is going to be Tesco. But the thing about the the product, <clears throat> I'm old enough to remember when you used to go downtown and you could buy whatever you wanted walking through Strand Street. Then Shoprite moved in, and it decimated. Douglas, as regards individual shops, uh, they were closing round uh, down by the dozen, and Tesco wanted to put another level on the existing premises down there, and it was the town council here in Douglas that objected to it for that very reason. It would take the heart right out of Douglas for the shopping. Uh, so, is this going to be allowed to? Well, you can't stop it, but to certainly make life a bit more awkward because they do say this. Tesco in Douglas is one of the most productive in the group because of the small area, the one shop, and uh, a fairly large population. Mm. You know, we're, we're all in the one place where the majority of people do their shopping in one shop. So what goes around comes around, and uh, the shop right decimated Douglas, and now Tesco bought out shop right and it's 21 years which is enough to keep the the opposition firmly in their own fields uh, but the people is going to be losing are the people of the Isle of Man ok alright thanks Howard take care bye now um, ok Nigel dropped a note in just says if this is the case how much longer will it be like Ramsey Bakery people won't be happy for a while and now we buy bread from across which people very much enjoy uh, so why can't Tesco reduce the size of the store in Douglas um, as well, we'll have more stores across the island. Why don't they make half the store in Douglas homeware, where you can buy a selection of homeware and clothes for which school parents uh, obviously can afford it. High Street in Douglas is very short of homeware and clothes stores at affordable prices. Maybe it's not the right answer, but it would help people in the times we're in. At the moment, I'm, uh, I have no doubt that the strategists in Welling Garden City or Chessent in Hertfordshire, where Tesco is based, have been looking at this i'm guessing this has been planned since before covid and they're trying to keep other people out of the isle of man it fits in with the um, the company behind Shoprite. remember they've been here 50 years they were here when nobody else wanted to be here and they've been a, a, f- a good servant to the Isle of Man. and obviously their business model moves on and we wish them well in that Can I also say um, uh, ShopRite are a UK-based company and they can sell it if they want to, said uh, Graham. Well, nobody's saying ShopRite can't sell. They have done. Tesco buying out ShopRite, I think, uh, is more bad news for Isle of Man people, says Texter775. Tesco will destroy small businesses, drive farmers out of business, and soon there'll be nothing Manx left. We lost the bakery. Big farmer has taken over the independent chemists and soon the government will be able to control what we purchase and where we can purchase it if if we're going to be allowed to at all. It's the global agenda. Well, it's just Tesco buying ShopRite and thanks for your view. Tesco have a monopoly on the Isle of Man, says Neil in Douglas. Local companies may lose out. I think it's a bad move for the Isle of Man. There will be job losses. I think they're saying everybody on the shops is going to be there, but people in the head office at um, uh, Centre House on Victoria Road, all the buyers and what have you, their jobs may be at risk. But not strictly a monopoly, Neil, because as I mentioned, there is co-op, there is Marks and Spencer, and there is Spa owned by the brewery 
Why don't we turn the sea terminal into a transport hub, says 212. It could act as a bus station with the buses stopping outside. And when the horse tram is reinstated, when, not if, when, it'll terminate there too. But on the seaward side, people could shelter in bad weather and there are loos. Visitors could get off the boat and onto a bus without trying to find the Lord Street site. Scott says it's an absolute no-brainer. We should use the sea terminal more. Scott, with some more views on the Tesco situation, show me anywhere in the UK where 90,000 people have nine Tescos. Doesn't exist. It's almost inevitable that some doors will close. Well, Scott, we'll... We don't know that for a, a fact. Remember, nine shop rights have been going for a long time, and they seem have seemed to do okay. But it certainly is um, a way of Tesco closing the door and anybody else wanting to come in. Uh, don't forget when ShopRite first came to the Isle of Man, says Jewan, they put small grocers and other people out of business. Now... Who knows what's going to happen with Tesco? It is the way of the world, Tesco uh, 491. And uh, please remember the co-op has stores. Yes, we've mentioned that. Thank you, 807. I'm Lu- Ruth says, I'm horrified to hear ShopRite's been sold to Tesco. What about local produce? I've just returned from checking out Tesco. Manx cheese is right at the end of the line, probably after most customers have bought other types. No Andrus meats, no Manx honey, no Robinson's local veg and fruit. What's going to happen to the producers? The Isle of Man must be self-sufficient. Has to be as self-sufficient as possible. The government needs to sort this out. Well, that is a good point. How many times when the boats haven't sailed for two, sometimes three days have the shelves in Tesco been stripped and you couldn't get anything. ShopRite have always made great play of the fact that they have stores and their shelves are stocked. So what will happen? Now, the point about Andrew's Meats, Manx Honey, Robinson's Vegetables and what have you, well, obviously, if you go to Tesco, you'll see that Isle of Man Creamery's milk is very, very prominent. They sell probably more Manx milk than any other type of milk. They sell Manx cheese. There is some Manx meat in there as well. But this is going to be focusing lots of people's thoughts on what will happen. Tesco, it has to be said, does not place any advertising really locally. ShopRite has been a very, very loyal supporter of media on the Isle of Man. The three radio stations, the newspapers have had lots and lots of business from ShopRite over the past 50 years. Whether or not that will happen with Tesco is open to question, and I think the perceived wisdom is it won't. It hasn't happened in the past because most um, Tesco radio advertising is bought on, in the industry, what's called a cost per thousand basis, i.e. they will pay a certain rate for a certain number of listeners, a thousand listeners or so. And really what their national media buyers would pay for radio advertising on the Isle of Man often isn't worth raising an invoice for. So you can uh, be sure that that's focused minds all over the Isle of Man. Will they be expanding their fleet for delivery because it's hard to get a slot? They have almost no drivers, says Bob. I would imagine they will. Uh, How do we know ShopRite was financially sustainable? Lots of food was reduced and shops had the feeling of sometimes being a bit stale. Tesco staff are well paid. They get share options, says 148. This is good for the Isle of Man. That's uh, your opinion, obviously. Um, No doubt the Isle of Man Enterprises as a company, I think, was extremely sustainable. So the remaining shops, uh, Tesco do price match offers. Marks and Spencer Co-op and Spa offer alternatives, says John. Uh, The remaining shops could have a boost in business like your local butchers. We lost Safeway. Let's support all our stores, says John. Aldi and Lidl like to have shops in high concentrations of the population. The Isle of Man has its population scattered over a relatively wide area and doesn't suit their business model. But a note in from Will, who just says, um, Tesco like to sell petrol. 
So how long will it be before one of our petrol retailers um, succumbs to the tender mercies of Tesco in the future? We don't know. There's no suggestion that they will. But we do have petrol retailers who have uh, small supermarkets attached to them. We don't quite know. How can uh, the Chief Minister support Isle of Man workers following the job losses at ShopRite while removing work permits, says uh, Will again. So no doubt you've already heard. No doubt you have heard that uh, that Tesco are buying ShopRite. So what's going to happen now? Well, this morning on uh, Manx Radio, the Chief Minister was on and asked about this situation. These things are always a bit of a a shock and uh, it was a bit of a shock to us to find out yesterday morning, of course, but uh, we did get an early briefing from ShopRite for which I'm very grateful. And yes, I'm saddened to see ShopRite go. I think think if you look at the positive side of this, I mean, you know, we should take heart that one of Britain's largest companies has seen fit to stay, not only remain on the Isle of Man, but do so in such a way by investing and, and purchasing uh, a secondary second major business so i think that's a positive i think for government though the concern automatically immediately turns to the people involved um, and what we can do to help them and then clearly the second issue for us is the supply chain um, and how we can seek to support local businesses so we're working on both those uh, aspects at the moment and those will be uh, the, the, the key area is for us to concentrate on in, in the coming days. And we're told the government was briefed by ShopRite ahead of the sale. I think you just mentioned that. Uh, was that yesterday morning? Was that the earliest point that you uh, that you found out? So that's correct. Um, and, you know, obviously we, we, we're grateful that uh, we, we got uh, three or four hours uh, notice on the uh, on the sale, which at least gave us some time to think about our, our response. But uh, yeah, no, it's 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 always a shock. But I mean, I think the you know the two the, the, the well, aside from the fact government has to concentrate on the people, there, I think there's probably well, from what we were told, about 60 people um, who potentially could uh, effectively um, at risk be at risk of redundancy. So we need to be concentrating, looking after them, and making sure that anybody impacted immediately um, is given support. And of course, we'll offer that as through the job centre, and we've made a direct offer. To to shop right to support staff if that uh, is needed um, and secondly we have su- we have set up between uh, the department for enterprise and department for food and agriculture a supply transition team and that team's going to look at how we can work with tesco to transition suppliers across of course we've got a few months whilst this process uh, is is uh, undertaken and i hope that uh, we'll be able to reach out properly to tesco's have proper discussions with them and see how we can move uh, aspects of the supply chain across to their brand. I just want to know what's your initial reaction to this? Do you think the Isle of Man is going to seem a bit less Manx with this, with Ramsey Bakery going, with ShopRite going and who knows what the impact may be on other businesses Um, The Isle of Man always looked different and felt different to across to elsewhere because of places like ShopRite and the fact there were few UK multiples on the Isle of Man And we had our own bakery. We've got our own uh, creamery. We've got our own um, meat processing plant. And now we won't. Tesco will be absolutely everywhere. We don't make our own bread anymore. We have small artisan bakers, but nothing like the bread factory that used to be on the old railway station in Ramsey. Do you think it just seems a bit less Manx? When it happened yesterday, we sent John Moss with the Manx Radio microphone to Victoria Road. Do you know that ShopRite has sold all its stores to Tesco? They've sold them? They've sold all nine stores to Tesco. ShopRite? ShopRite has. You're joking. I'm not, no. <laughs> And you come here regularly, do you? Yeah, to we shop do. Right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Is it your favourite store, or do you go to other stores as well? Uh, we go to other stores as well, but it's mostly shop right. Will it make a difference to your shopping? Will you still come here, even though it's got a different name above the door? No, it won't make any difference to us. It's a surprise. All nine stores. Did you know? No, no idea. First you've heard. Is this where you come regularly to yes. Victoria Road and yes. shop right? Mm-hmm. Will you continue coming here despite the fact it's got another name above the door? Mm. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Because it's convenient. Yeah, we live quite close. Oh, wow. Are you, are you a regular yeah. shop, right? Yeah. Oh, no, I had no idea. All nine stores? I had no idea. Do you come here regularly to shop, I, right? I do, yes. Will, and will you still be coming here even though it's got a different, na- a different name above the door? Well, if the prices stay the same and the 
shelves stay stocked. I don't see why I shouldn't. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. It's going to change your shopping habits. Are you still going to come here, despite uh, the fact it's got Tesco above the door? Um, probably because it's the closest to where I live. So, <laughs> yeah. We do actually shop Tesco. So it won't more. really affect you. No, not really. But it's sad for the island. It's a shame because it reduces the choice on the island that we're going to have. But will you continue coming here? Yes, absolutely. Yes, I mean, absolutely. So I'll carry on coming here. What's it changing to? Tesco. Tesco are taking them all. Are they? All nine stores, yeah. It's a bit sad, but it happens. That was the microphone yesterday in Victoria Road. Text 166177, WhatsApp 166177, email studio at manxradio.com. Call 66 13 68. I just wonder what your thoughts are uh, with the disappearance of that uh, iconic name, ShopRite, right around the Isle of Man, and the fact that it will be replaced by the multinational, omnipresent Tesco right around the Isle of Man. I wonder what you think. We've got some breaking news, uh, Lewis Foster. Uh, what's happening, Lewis? Uh, yeah, just had some uh, news in from the Royal College of Nursing, actually. A planned nurses' strike on the island has been paused while the union considers a new offer from Manx Care. We've had this literally in the last 10 minutes. Wanted to bring it uh, up as soon as possible. Uh, members of the Royal College of Nursing had been due to strike for two days next week in this ongoing row over pay and working conditions. This was planned for Thursday and Friday. Um, They say this revised offer would see a further 2.75% consolidated uplift on the 6% that has already been awarded for 2022 to 23, equating to an 8.75% pay rise for that year. Union members rejected the initial offer in previous ballots. The pay award of 4% for the year 2021 to 22 remains unchanged, it says, providing a total pay offer of 12%. 0.75% over two years and as we know it's already led to a couple of days of strike action so far this year so that's the latest on there. Well we're obviously reaching out to Manx Care just to see what their reaction is presumably. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay so just briefly once again the strike is off yeah? That's it it's paused uh, and while the union considers the new offer. Okay thank you Lewis more news at uh, one o'clock we're regarding that. We have some reports this morning by the way of cold calling around Douglas. Uh, Thelma dropped a note in just to say uh, she had somebody turn up at her door this morning early uh, just knocking on the door just saying did they want roof work done now obviously cold calling cold calling is uh, not permitted if you've been affected by cold calling call the office of fair trading or you can call the police 631212 is the um Cold calling uh, is uh, not permitted on the Isle of Man. And also, uh, if you do get anybody calling, uh, cold calling, offering uh, building work or anything like that, um, one of the ways you can actually find out whether they're legit or not is ask for a business card. So just a reminder, we've uh, cold, the OFT would like to remind you, cold calling is illegal on the Isle of Man, and the police have issued a cold calling um, warning for people purporting to do odd jobs in the West Douglas area. If anybody does, then if you've got um, doorstep cameras, that would be terrific, but please ask them for a business card. That will normally sort out the wheat from the chaff. But please be aware, West Douglas people offering work to be done on houses and cold calling, and uh, it's not on. Hello, this is Doug Farragher. In conjunction with Manx Radio, I'd like to invite you to join us and learn something about our native Gaelic tongue, the language of man. Have you been invited to take part in the Household Income and Expenditure Survey? It's one of the most important surveys for our island because the information you provide is vital data for our island's financial planning. It helps us calculate our VAT revenue from the UK. Plus, it gives us a better understanding of the financial strains on residents so we can support those who are struggling. If you've been invited, please take part. Visit gov.im forward slash H-I-E-S for more information. We'll gather here today... All her friends thought Kerry was going to be a right bridezilla. She was so determined that everything had to be totally perfect. But they needn't have worried, because Connister Bank had Kerry's back. Do you, Kerry, have the Connister feeling? I so do. 
Wedding finance with a three-month honeymoon period before payments start. Visit conisterbank.co.im and you can get the Conister feeling too. All loans are subject to status. Terms and conditions apply. Early settlement fees apply. To the community cafe at Crossroads. Enjoy a bite to eat or a cover in cake, all while supporting a worthy cause. The community cafe at Crossroads, 11 Tinwald Street, Douglas. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every Thursday and Friday. Crossroads, I love man. Putting care as first. Riley's Garden Centre for great gift and present ideas for outdoor clothing and wellies for all your pet supplies and all the tools and products to get your garden winter ready for everything for autumn call in at Cool Row Braddon or visit rileys.co.im Get ready for another winning weekend on Manx Radio And this weekend you could win £200 to spend at the other place in Ramsey courtesy of Miller Chaps the only place you need for a great new look for your home Visit manxradio.com and answer the competition question for your chance to win You can enter as many times as you like And then make sure you join us for Manx Radio Breakfast on Monday morning to find out if you're the winner Make this your winning weekend with your nation station Manx Radio Radio. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. 22 minutes before one on Manx Radio. I was stuck on one of three planes on the tarmac at Ronald's Way last night, says uh, 475, waiting for ground crew to marshal us off no staff and an hour on a stuffy plane last night. The captain said no one was even answering the phone at one point. The thing is that the plane had two other flights scheduled and this had a knock-on effect, possibly leading to cancellations. Surely airlines will think twice about using Ronald's Way if it can't deal with the air traffic uh, leading to ever reduced services to the Isle of Man. Uh, and G, 313G, government should provide Chester Street free to local producers to set up market stalls and to sell goods. Well, of course, that previously was um, ShopRite in Iceland before that it was Lipton's once upon a time wasn't it in there and, uh, and then it was the uh, it was the jabbing centre it was the vaccination centre during Covid Chester Street is owned uh, by government and it was maybe Tesco will take that on and put you don't know do you how many Tesco uh, how many Tesco stores will be Tesco Expresses which people need to know says Dave are more expensive than ordinary Tesco and Leslie said is Tesco buying uh, Shoprite to prevent Aldi from coming here, Leslie. That probably did come into their thinking somewhere. I'm not a retail expert, but uh, if you can oc- occupy all the territory, it will put other uh, people off. And uh, John said, um, one of the things about Shoprite is that they are and they were one of the biggest media advertising companies on the Isle of Man. Newspapers, magazines, and uh, were a, or a big advertiser throughout the radio stations. I, I doubt that Tesco will continue to spend that sort of money as they rely on their national TV advertising and social media. Uh, I would imag- imagine, John, thank you. It's good to hear from you, John, uh, that uh, that sent chills down a few spines within the media community across the Isle of Man. But that is the thing. Tesco simply don't advertise locally. They rely on national advertising in newspapers and also on television and social Social media. So we wait and we watch. Julian's on now. Hi, Julian. Hi, Andy. Um, yeah, just before I get on to Tesco, just a quick one. I've um, just been looking at the Wardell Armstrong Wind Farm um, report, uh, the feasibility study. Uh, just one quick uh, query. Um, all the signature panels are redacted. So we don't know who wrote it. We don't know. I mean, if you had a, a survey done on a house and it wasn't signed, would it be valid? I what well, we're hoping. I'm um, fingers crossed to try and get some people from Wardell Armstrong on Man in Line and chat to them about what exactly is happening. That's an excellent idea. Yeah, I'd be really, really interested to hear that one. Um, Tesco um, probably worth remembering that the um, majority shareholders are BlackRock, the Vanguard Group, and Silchester International Investors LLP. Um, 
And as you know, they are. If you, if anyone just puts in Tesco and ESG or Tesco and DEI, uh, you will see things like uh, this is a great fit for my values and behaviours for people who are working at Tesco. Behaviours, whatever, whatever that means. Um, just a couple of comments, really. Um, I noticed back in September of 2014, Tesco's share price plummeted after it was found to have illegally inflated its accounts by £250 million. Um, And I think the chief exec went, didn't he, at that time? Sorry, say that again. The chief exec, I think, went, didn't he? Or certainly a senior executive disappeared at that time. That's correct. Yeah, there was uh, quite a bit of consternation on that one. So I think there's some scurrilous things going on with their accounts trying to make them look better than they were. Um, other things, Tesco, if anybody looks up Tesco Get Go, um, that is basically an almost completely devoid of any staff in there. And you pay basically with your app. Um, they are cashless. Um, so I don't know how that's going to go. But it's interesting, a couple of recent ones. The Daily Mail reported recently, uh, Tesco shoppers are forced to show their receipts before leaving the store. A supermarket joined Sainsbury's and Aldi in clampdown on self-service checkout thieves. That was at Tesco Extra in Shoreham on the south yeah. coast of England. Well, they, I mean, the UK, anyway, has got a massive problem with shoplifting because they don't have that many police or they don't seem to concentrate or bother about shoplifting. I think it was anything that was below £200 wasn't really... Uh, didn't really flash up so I mean I don't think that transfers over here no hopefully not um, also interesting the Bolton News uh, reports on a Tesco shopper called Pat McCarthy who's done a petition calling for fewer self-service tills which has gained over 100,000 signatures after many complaints about a Tesco in Brentford where three quarters of the tills are self-service with the disabled and elderly who weren't able to manage them um, having an average queue wait time of 30 minutes at the remaining manned tills yeah. so let's hope that uh, ShopRite does and turn into a whole bunch of um, you know self checkout uh, I think there are all sorts of implications to this remember Tesco um, runs um, Tesco has got telecoms and internet services in the UK I mean they they sell financial services as well as petrol you know uh, shopping groceries are, are kind of down the line that gets people through the door but I mean they sell uh, telecoms they sell internet services as well they also own macro which is the um, uh, the um, kind of wholesale place the cash and carry place so you know it's possible they could bring a macro to the Isle of Man possibly um, one thing actually I did notice the other day when I was walking through the street I don't know if anybody has noticed this but I have never seen the queues so long in boots since they've got rid of the tills on the left side when you go in I mean literally there must have been 40 people queuing at, the, at, at that point I have never seen them going around like that before so I, I just wonder about um, if they start bringing this in what the queue times are going to be like oh and again I'm sure somebody somewhere has got an algorithm that will tell will, will tell them you know how much it costs to employ till staff and how much they take and what have you and whether or not we are i mean i don't know about you but um, self-service uh, i think s- tends to depersonalize things well probably the whoever wrote the algorithm is probably good mates with neil ferguson i would imagine okay <laughs> all right uh, thanks julian Thanks, Andy. All right, it's a quarter to one on Manx Radio. This is the news, crikey. Uh, it is, I mean, it's, it's seismic, really, on the Isle of Man. A big name on uh, retail on the Isle of Man for the past 50 years is going. ShopRite is going. The name ShopRite will be no more once Tesco rebrand everything that they have now bought. And yes, Tesco do own Macro. They do own a cash and carry. It's possible they could bring that to the Isle of Man. They do run internet services. They do run telecoms. In the UK, you can buy uh, a Tesco mobile package and an internet service. Maybe Tesco are looking at internet, possibly telecom services on the Isle of Man. And will they bring back the Tesco credit card? In our quest to remove all single-use plastic from our milk packaging, Isle of Man Creamery cartons, including the new 1.75 litre carton, are now 100% recyclable, made from sustainable and renewable sources. 
We're the first in the British Isles to offer these new large cartons, and you can pick them up now in local retailers or add them to your Isle of Man Creamery doorstep delivery. Plant-based cartons from Isle of Man Creamery. Better for the environment, better for you. Autumn is a time for harvest, to gather a return, to reap a reward. So this autumn, join the others who have already made their savings grow. Make the most of your money at the Guernsey Bank Skipton International with the 5.75% AER fixed rate savings bond maturing 1st of January 2025. For details of all our savings products, call 01841 730 730 or visit skiptoninternational.com. No withdrawals allowed until maturity. Interest is paid annually and upon maturity. Skipton International is licensed to take deposits by the GFSC and is a participant in the Guernsey Banking Deposit Compensation Scheme. See dcs.gg. For your new bathroom, head to Paysetter, Harris Terrace, Douglas or Spring Valley. In Paysetter's fully fitted showroom, you'll find the latest bathroom products and designs from new contemporary styles to traditional Victorian tiles, wall and ceiling panels, accessories and much more. With many ranges exclusive to Paysetter's plus professional design advice from the experts, visit Paysetter Harris Terrace Douglas or Spring Valley. You can get the best of it. The Isle of Man is an island like no other, with so much to experience this autumn and winter right on your doorstep. Discover exciting activities, attractions, accommodation and food at discounted rates at visitisleofman.com forward slash OYD23. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Jewan's on. Hi, Jewan. How are you today, Andy? Very very happy, actually. Very happy. Very happy. Very happy. Good. I was listening to the um, uh, I was listening to Al Cannon's statement this morning there, and um, I, some of these ministers need to start hanging around with me. I mean, I heard two weeks ago that um, that they were sitting down having talks with Tesco. Everybody, so, um... everybody said that the moment it was announced <laughs> yesterday. Half a dozen people in the office said, uh, "I heard that in Peel. I heard that in Castletown. I, yeah. I heard it in the Rovers' return." The, the hang, the hang around in the wrong place. I think I heard it about the same time as I heard David Ashwood was going into Coman, so I, I, they, need to, they need to start hanging around in different circles, I think, to find out this information. Um, I do hope that um, um, Tesco, with all their um, uh, ESGs and DEIs, which is inclusion and um, equality, I do hope that that's going to uh, transfer into putting local stuff on the shelves um, with, with, with their DEIs that they like to um, perform to um, I remember some time ago actually a friend of mine who, who was living on the island who had a big supermarket in Bolton in the 60s and um, he said the sleepless nights he had when he heard that Quicksave were opening up within Bolton and um, you know the lack of business that he would have being a, a small independent supermarket back then it's amazing how times change isn't it quick save was I think that was Ken Nicholson and Albert Goubet it I was yeah right. certainly yeah. I mean I mean, the, the, we've been largely immune from supermarket wars uh, on the Isle of Man but I mean this is the, this is a complete takeover and no matter what anyone thinks about um, Shoprite and the Nicholsons, they've been they've been good, um, good servants to the Alaman for, for 50 years, um, and they've provided a good service through thick and thin. And I think they've gone through some hard times. I think they've been approached by supermarkets before um, to, to to sell out. So the, the the problem you've got now, I think, with with Tesco having so much hold here, is the stranglehold that they will have on government. Um, and also, as we know, I, I've, I've had friends who have sold to supermarkets before, and it, you know, back in the early days when supermarkets started. And because of the power that they have, they hammer down the prices on people. Mm-hmm. So the suppliers that they use, you know, get really hammered with pricing. So I think um, Robinson's made a good statement last night. I mean, they put a, a three legs a man up, I think, with their label through the middle of it saying, don't let the legs fall off this. And I, I think, you know, you know, it's the old um, use it or lose it syndrome. I think people now, I, I've spoke about food sustainability here many times on this program and I go back to what the minister said about it a while ago when she was asked about what's our food sustainability and she said the Manxman, <laughs> which yeah. a bit, bit, bit profound this week. But um, uh, I think, um, yeah, we need to go back to looking after ourselves. It is going to cost more for food. I think Tesco will probably take off their cheaper range of food now because they don't need to be as cheap anymore. 
all they've got to be is cheaper than Marks and Spencers and anyone else that's here. So okay. they've taken their main player out okay. of the market. So right. we may not see the cheaper range. Joe, and I've got to go because we've got an expert. I'm not saying you're not an expert, but uh, Martin Brunschweiler's with us from Bushes. Good. Cheers, Andy. Good Cheers. to hear from you. Thanks for that. Martin's with us. Hi, Martin. What did you think to the news? Um, I, I think I'm still uh, I'm still sort of uh, letting it sort of settle in. I'm, I'm not quite I'm not sure what to think really, but um, I do. But my but my uh, my initial instinct is how uh, how grateful we have been to Shoprite over the years um, for, for stocking. I, I, you know, I'm not talking just us. You know, lots and lots of local suppliers uh, have, have been uh, have been helped out by by Shoprite and. During the um, during the COVID situation, we they, they came to our rescue when um, when uh, after we'd already stockpiled all the beer for the TT in 2020, um, we we thought we were going to be throwing it away, and uh, the, uh, thankfully Shoprite uh, agreed to allow us to put the um, the beer oh, all that beer into uh, milk containers, and we sold it through their fridges, and that that, that literally kept us uh, kept us afloat during uh, a really tough time. And I think, so, I mean, sometimes Martin, familiar, familiarity breeds contempt, and, and many people have no idea how Manx Shoprite is and the the service that they've been. Because I mean, I don't need to tell you, it's the devil's only job to get your produce into other supermarkets, and you have to jump through far more hoops. Than than, than ShopRite. So, I mean, do you think that the, the food industry and the drinks industry on the Isle of Man is going to miss ShopRite? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, it, it all depends whether whether Tesco are prepared to, uh, you know, to to continue that policy and, and to allow local produce to, um, you know, to, to, to be on their shelves. Um, it's, as you say, I'm, I'm sure that we know there are a lot more hoops you have to jump through if you want to be a supplier to Tesco or any of the big uh, supermarket chains. But, yeah, I, I think we're really going to miss uh, ShopRite. I, I, you know, I think we'll, we'll pray that, um, that that Tesco continue it. But, uh, no, at the moment, it's all up in the air. Uh, it just feels a bit less Manx with Ramsey Bakery going, with the ShopRite name going. Um, the fact that iconic names and names that people who come to the Isle of Man notice, names like Bushes, you know, having that sort yep. of iconic totemic name is important for the island's identity. Definitely. No, definitely. And I think, uh, you know, people, well, I think, I think ShopRite will be sorely missed. But, uh, but, but anyway, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be too pessimistic about the future. But I, but I do think we need to acknowledge how good, how good ShopRite have been for us. OK. All right. Martin, I appreciate it. Thanks for calling today. Pleasure. Thank you. Good to hear from you. And James is with us now. Hi, James. Hi, good morning. Um, just briefly, I think that Tesco have done this as a smart move on their behalf to avoid Aldi buying the uh, ShopRite group. I mean, they will have planned this for a long time, but you say you reckon it's predatory in that way that they're they're just swamping the market so nobody else will come in. Well, that's right. That's right. I th- I think Aldi would have had their eye on it because they're they're expanding all little one or the other and it's their way of making sure that their little prize gem on the Isle of Man is still all there and they have no competition will, James will you will you miss ShopRite of course I will yeah it's, it's a Manx identity isn't it it's uh, it certainly uh, it did things that Tesco didn't do in some ways Yes, we'll miss it. Okay, yeah. thanks for that, James. I appreciate you. Well, um, Shoprite for many, many years have been tremendous supporters to the Manx community. Anybody who's run a charity event will know that if you go to Shoprite, you will normally get a hamper for the for the raffle. You'll normally get help. Now, whether or not that continues within the confines of the Tesco multinational mindset, uh, we wait. And we watch Fenodery uh, have dropped a note in also to say they'd like to express their huge gratitude to the team at ShopRite for their stalwart support, not only in being a valued retailer of Fenodery products, but for being a fantastic advocate for food and drink producers on the Isle of Man. ShopRite have been instrumental in ensuring that their range of premium Manx spirits have been accessible across the Isle of Man, and ShopRite's support has provided a catalyst in helping promote 
promote the Finn brand in the UK and beyond for the broader benefit of the Manx economy. Uh, for Nodri, by the way, have got some more products on the way, so they hope uh, want to work constructively with Tesco over the coming weeks and months. And I suspect there'll be in a queue of people wanting to get in touch with Tesco and finding out exactly what is going on. I also want to draw to your attention, I'll bring it um, uh, more to the fore tomorrow, but Manx National Heritage are putting together uh, a legacy f- uh, from the successful Manx 100 exhibition at the Manx Museum. They're putting together a poster wall in the museum showcasing the collection of theatre and performance posters from the 1850s onwards. But they don't have much from the 1950s onwards. have got a couple of Ronnie Aldrich and the Squadron Airs posters. But, uh, so they're looking for any photographs, ticket stubs, posters perhaps, were there even posters produced, anything that they can copy. I'll give you more information, but in the meantime, Matthew Richardson is the curator in charge of this at uh, Manx National Heritage. Matthew is on 648053 or email inquiries at mnh.im. That's Matthew Richardson, 648053. They're looking for posters, theatre and performance posters, particularly from uh, the 50s, 60s and 70s. If you can help, they'd be really grateful. Well, thanks for calling in today. Thanks for your uh, your messages. I really appreciate it. Chris Quirk on the phone today. Back tomorrow with another open line. W-I-N-T.